your permission. So I've just turned the recordings um, option on. So nobody say anything that you would be embarrassed by later. Um, no, that's, I, 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 I think we should get started then, maybe. If you would like to get started, we can. We have a couple more people who've registered that are not on yet, but I don't know if they're logging in late. So what we're going to do is we're going to mute everybody and let David start his presentation. Um, when you have a question or comment, if you'll um, raise your hand, then we'll be able to have one person speak at a time so he can respond to it. Baba is waiting. Yeah, I just got him in. Yes, okay. No, it's actually. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. David, give me a moment. I'll mute everyone and then unmute you. Okay. And now you, David, you have to unmute yourself. Your setting doesn't let me do it for you. There you go. You, you can begin. I'm going to mute myself as well. I guess I'm not muted. Um, so let's let's start. Uh, this this uh, chat was described as a trip down memory lane, uh, looking at Bestrelom archives. It really got started because I digitized. Karen, is there something I need to know? Nope, it's all good. Okay, When thanks. that doorbell rings, it means someone needs to come in. I've let them in. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, it started because I, uh, Bobby and I, who have been uh, members of Bestialome since 1976, uh, when the synagogue was, was then in a small building on Coachman Road, we were greeted by none other than Marie Silverman, who is happily with us here today, uh, and welcomed into the, the congregation. So in the 46 years we've been members, um, we've seen it mature and grow, and I've had the opportunity to serve as treasurer, vice president, and president. And working with Rabbi Bromberg, blessed memory, uh, we pub we, I published uh, and uh, with with information from, from Bob, Bob, Rabbi Bromberg and the community, Bobby and I published the Cold Bestralom. This was a time when desktop publishing was just getting started, so it was, it was really the first time that the bulletin had been done that way. And that brought us really close to the heart and soul of the congregation. We really got to understand the, the pulse of the congregation. And as it was looking back through those bulletins in my retirement and being shut at home, I digitized them and sent them to the synagogue. Uh, and that prompted the request, well, why don't you share these bulletins? They're digital um, and they can be searched so that you can put in a search name and look for, look for information. So that's part of what most of what we're talking about, but I'm going to talk a little bit more broadly about archives at uh, Beth Shalom. So we look at the, some gems in the Beth Shalom archives and then go on to the memories from the cold Beth Shalom. And a reminder that archives are important to historians and genealogists. Um, I'm something of a genealogist and, uh, had, and can account for many family lines going back of seven generations to my um, seven great grandparents. Um, and you do this by looking at archives are we okay to continue, Karen? 
Yes, you're good. Okay, so we do this by looking at archives and uh, I'm going to skip over the next couple of slides because the things I've prepared for something else where I showed ancestry going way back and looking at records in the Inquisition and looking at records in synagogue records that are 400 years old and cemetery records and marriage records. Incredible journey. And so that brings us to the CBS and the major events. And while, when I think of this, I think, well, in another 400 years, will there be any records of Beth Shalom that anybody would be able to search for? And leave that thought out there, I don't know. And what's really nice is that a lot of uh, communities have records uh, three or 400 years old that are being digitized and uh, can be searched, which is truly, uh, truly phenomenal with the, the technology. So looking at Beth Shalom and the major events, the formation of, in 1959, uh, on the top left hand side of the screen, the formation of the congregation and it's uh, a small dedication of its, 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 its small building, the first building. And we tend to focus a bit on, on buildings. I'm not going to do that much here because we, we also dedicated the next building in 1977 and then our larger home in, 19, in 19, I'm sorry, 1977 and 1992, our current larger home. Um, Looking back, though, the, the, the significant things, um, the, in the 50th anniversary, a number of people wrote some very good articles in, the, in that, uh, in that, bullet, in that uh, brochure. And one of them I mentioned now, it's, 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 it's on the screen called Chapter 1, Genesis. And this is a, a history of the congregation written by Paul Applefield. Now, I did, at the time, um, I did capture that, and I was able to uh, to digitize that, and if I could ever make this work, um, I have that on the screen somewhere here. We'll look for it. Another, we'll look for it when we get back to it. But this is uh, uh, Paul uh, wrote a great detail the history of the congregation. So that is available to us electronically for viewing and searching. The second thing on the middle here is the two generations towards Jewish women's rights and responsibilities, and this is. The work done in primarily 1982 and 83, 84, to establish the women's rights and responsibilities to, and be able to have a, 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 leo, a leo and, and full participation in, in, the, in the community. And this was an absolutely major milestone for the congregation. Um, the prime milestone was, of course, joining the conservative movement. This is now saying, okay, we're going to have women with, with rights and- David? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but everybody's only seeing the title page. We're not seeing all the other slides. I can see them on the sidebar, but I can't make them come up. So as you're talking, we're not seeing what you're talking about. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Well, let me back up because um, I'm not sure why that happened. Shared window is closed. I'm not sure why that happened. Let's try again. Um, not sure why it's doing that now. So let's try again. I think somewhere along the line, I got shut down and didn't know it. Can we see this window? You're not sharing now. Oh. Now you're back to the first slide. Okay, let's see that I get set uh, the next slides. Did we get that slide? Now you have it. Okay, now let me ask a question. If I do this, can you, can you see a window with, with file, files on them? Uh, right now I just see topics. Okay. We'll, we'll worry about that one later on when we get there. Um, right, so I talked about the, the Beth Shalom archives, and that's what we were into right now, is some of the history of Beth Shalom, and then we're going to do memories from the cold. But I, this is really to emphasize that archives are important for those of us doing history and genealogy. And I had a couple of slides here talking about work that I'd done with family 400 years back and uh, records in the Inquisition and records in cemeteries and in communities uh, that are available. 
And so my question was, in 400 years, will anybody know where to look for your records in Bess Shalom? And that's an interesting thought. So going back to the major events, this, can you see this page? Yes. Okay. So we're seeing the Bess Shalom on the left-hand side, the 1959 foundation, formation of Bess Shalom. And we can see the, the first building and the second building. Whoa. And uh, are we still on the page? Major events page. Okay, good. Um, I got interrupted here, maybe concerned. Okay, so we were at the point where I mentioned uh, chapter one, Genesis. This was the uh, article, historical article by Paul Applefield. And then we were talking about the women's rights and responsibilities, extensively written about um, by Rabbi Bromberg, and Johanna Bromberg, and others in the, in the bulletins at the time. So the bulletins covered some interesting periods. And, uh, and then, of course, we've, we've got the brochures for 30 years and 40 years and 50 years. And the bottom right is a time capsule, uh, which has uh, historical materials uh, from this was a time when the when the building was being built in in 1992 when that shortly after that building was done. So those those are available. Uh, the certainly the Genesis article is available and women's rights and responsibilities. And I I'll make them available to to Karen. So if if they can be accessed electronically, generally that would be up to if if Karen can arrange that. Um, we can we can upload it for people to uh, yeah. click on directly. Right. Yes. So you know there are a lot of ongoing activities, way more than I can cover here. Um, other than the bulletins, the sisterhood has uh, input into the bulletins. The library for a, a number of years had um, ex had written in the bulletins, um, and then the men's club had also been involved. They're now known, of course, as the brotherhood. Um, youth and educa adult education programs are described, and of course, celebrations and commemorations. A major archive that we have was the lab Library Committee archive, and this is this large album in the form of a scrapbook that's uh, pro produced by the Library Committee when it was chaired by Jane Cowley of Blessed Memory. It threw photographs and text, and it's on display in the library or in the Pell Social Hall on a on its own lectern. Um, this describes the history and text and pictures of the congregation through to a few years ago. And it's got an, a nice introduction in there from Rabbi Kenneth Bromberg, who blessed memory. I commend you to looking at that. It's got a lot of interesting pages. The, so these are some of the pages I brought out here. The, on the top left, the United Synagogue recognizing Beth Shalom as a member the first building, the um, carrying the Sefer Torah between the first building and our second building. And there's a picture of our second building, which was uh, a converted church and, uh, and so on. So there's articles on education and the, from the affiliated groups, um, a choir, Kanta Mirovich, um, and Freedom Sunday. We're going to come back to that. And then we had the movement to expand Best Shalom and uh, increase the, the, to, to, to give us the right facility so we could accommodate our members and also have a facility for having functions. On the bottom left, we have uh, the ex break, for groundbreaking, and then we have pictures of the building. And finally, the, the Holocaust Torah that we received to display in the, in the, in the lobby of the building. So let's take a closer look at a couple of different things. The first is woman in ritual, and then we'll go on to the bulletins. Um, 1983, um, the Rabbi Bromberg uh, ran a poll and uh, got, got that electronically as well, um, and had 159 individual responses. And this was concerning the, how people felt about um, uh, having women, giving women full rights. Um, we've got the bulletin articles from 1983. Um, this was written by Rabbi Bromberg. And then he had two sermons on April the 4th and 
15 to 1983, uh, we, in great detail, he analyzed the eyes from a hierarchical point of view. And I would commend those uh, to anyone wanting. Those are also digitized. And you can, where well, you can see the yellow highlight on the words aliot, I just happened to search it for the words uh, aliot, and, and so it shows up that way. So you can do a search on the on a particular word, and in the middle of the of the, of the page, at the bottom aliot for Torah for women. This was now we'd introduced aliot to Torah for women, but then we didn't have a lot of acceptance of that, and to expand it. Um, we were asking women, please, to let us know whether you would accept an honor. Now, to make all of this happen, this is on the bottom right, the Women's Institute for Living and Learning was a key element. We, this started back in, in 1983 to provide the opportunity for women to, to learn um, the, the, the practices and their, for, of becoming their full rights. And there was an extensive um, education program on that. Um, and then Will, Women's Institute for Living and Learning, uh, after we got all the ladies uh, educated, that's pretty good, then we went to Adult Living and Learning, and it was called ALL, which was a nice acronym. So the transition really was, it was of course open to everybody, but this was a nice way of making it much more inclusive. And, and the success of this is, is there, we've nurtured at least one Hebrew educated and one rabbi from the children of the congregation. Um, Karen, at this point, may want to stop and ask anybody if they want to comment on this or, or ask any questions. I know Johanna is here, can talk about uh, what, what I just skimmed over here. Do we have, uh, if, if you'd like to ask a question, unmute yourself. Esther, are you raising your hand, Esther, or no? Okay. All right. Anna? Uh, thank you, David. That, that's great. A, a phrase with will that was established in a Women's Institute for, for Living and Learning uh, Ken considered this as compensatory education. And of course, that phrase was all in the news in other contexts at the time. But he felt oh, for, for the last 50 years of his uh, life that women had not been given the educational opportunities. And he really took us very seriously. This wasn't, um, you know, whipped cream education. It was serious education. And the result is uh, that women really began taking part very seriously. So. Anyone else? David, David, it's Marie. Go ahead. I went through all this. It, this, is, this is my life. Right there, <laughs> what you're doing. I was there. And I feel very fortunate to be here, to be with you as you go through the memories. Well, thank I, you, David. We're, we're delighted to have you here with us. And I, I feel somehow that you do a much better job of this than, than me because of your closeness and, time and, and experience with, with, this, with the congregation. But at least I may stir some memories here and, and uh, take it from there. Okay, I'll move, move on to Karen. Go ahead. Okay, so the best shalom, it, 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 the core best shalom is that I've digitized is searchable. Um, uh, several lead articles by, uh, by Rabbi Bromberg. Um, there are several issues with social action on behalf of Soviet Jewry by so so Susan Davis. I did try to contact Susan to see whether he could join us. This was. This was an almost forgotten um, aspect of Beshalom and uh, in terms of social action. And I've got some page, a page or two on that. Um, I'd, I'd forgotten about it till I did, we did the bulletin and then Susan happened to ask me, could, could she see some of the articles that she had written? And I will go through, we'll show them here. We have articles on the stained glass windows and some other informative one articles. And then Pat Patan, which was 
uh, what I call happy movie and growing family stories written by someone who wanted to remain anonymous. Those who were around at the time probably figured it out. But um, I also asked that person to join us today, but uh, the person didn't, so <laughs> it wouldn't, so we'll move forward here. Um, lead articles right by Bomberg. Um, uh, this, I picked out two here. One was um, Beth Shalom doing some soul searching, searching with conservative Judaism on what the next hundred years should look like. Um, so conservative Judaism was, was doing that, and at the same time, Beth Shalom did uh, spend time with this Paul Applefield and Irv Ketty looking at how the next hundred years should be planned at CBS, which was rather interesting. Um, another article with, a, with an unusual title by Robert Rongberg, Are We Ashamed of God? And this was coming up to the, the high holy days when um, uh, asking the question, are you ashamed of God? Ashamed of God? Have, you, have we become so secularized that we are acutely discomforted by prayer? Are we embarrassed by religious belief? Uh, this was a good question when this was written and probably an even more significant question today um, in our current environment. You'll also see some um, memorials to uh, various individuals that were recorded in the call at that time. Soviet jury, social action, uh, just tremendous effort put in by Susan Davis on behalf of Soviet jury. On the left-hand side, there's a, the article about the KGB, it speaks for itself, the KGB, uh, picking some up by the arms and legs and throwing them through the bus and, and so on. So this is a refusenik, Ida Nudel, and, uh, and this went on several, uh, they had, we had some, they selected some particular families, um, Chernobylsky family and Zelichonok family that we followed through their experiences and in trying to make a Leah. Um, and they were trapped in the Soviet Union and making a Leah. And then a new commitment letter, this is, uh, this is an establishment of the committee. Uh, this culminated in a Freedom Sunday, and I don't know too much about the details of this, but Rabbi Bromberg, Sula Davis, Eric, Eileen Gala, and others uh, represented this in Washington in 1987. Um, it was a day to, to support freedom of Soviet Jewry by a march in, in, uh, in Washington. Can I pause and ask if anybody remembers anything more about this action, social action? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm David, yes. David, we were part of a, a very strong movement in the United States to support Soviet Jewry. And I think it was Elie Wiesel, I believe, who wrote his Jews of Silence. I believe that was the title of the book at the, at the time. And I think his point was, and Dershowitz may have written about it also, but the point was that in America, before and during World War II, the Jewish community was reticent to speak up. And both of these leaders, both Wiesel and Dershowitz, were determined to do all they could, that that would never happen again. And that was part of the, the strength of the Soviet Jewry movement. Um, I remember being in Boston back in the early 70s when there was a major rally there. And, and the sense was, you know, never again. Uh, what was the appropriate term at the time. And I'm very proud that Beth Shalom was very much a part of that movement at the time that it was at its height. Right. Stained glass windows. They're on the east wall of, this, of the sanctuary. Uh, they're gifted to Beth Shalom by Harriet Howitch and Gertrude Kurtzman in loving memory of the dear ones. 
the artist was Len Neff. I believe he, Len was a local artist um, who, who, after, who, who, who designed the windows. Rabbi Bromberg extensively described to him what, what kinds of things should be represented in the windows and gave him the shapes and pictures of things. And uh, the first window deals with the Shalosh Regalim, the Triad Festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Um, second window is Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh. Uh, third window is Hanukkah, Purim, and Tu Bishvat. And fourth was the expression of religion in daily life. And the fifth window, um, commemorating the Holocaust and celebrating the establishment of the state of Israel in, in one, one window. Um, they're certainly a very attractive addition to the to the sanctuary and enjoyed by us all. Now, our favorite gastroenterologist, I'm sorry, archaeologist, or gastroenterologist and archaeologist, Eric Steckler. Um, articles in the Golden Age of Spain. Uh, the three here. Uh, one on the what happened to the ten lost tribes of Israel, uh, and the third on the golden anniversary in the golden Medina, and then the Kala adult, adult education to, to, to Talmudic style. Uh, these are four of, of Eric's learned writings that were included in the bulletins in the time when I edited them. Hoping Eric would have joined us today, but he didn't make it so. This is where we get to the personal memories. And uh, I, so if we search the, the bulletins, and I can do some searches if anybody wants to do that. Um, this is rather interesting, because this one has got the birth of Jordan Steckler. So think, think of some of these things that are recorded and where the folks are today. Um, Sylvia and Harold Kaiser celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary. And this was in 1980-something, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a tremendous. Uh, The birth of Leah, the daughter of Owen and Marcy Linda. And Mark Silverman for keeping an eye on our paperwork. <laughs> um, this was in the form, I guess, of a gossip column and uh, recognized um, a lot of people for, a lot of, for their uh, happy events and for their lot not so happy events. And of course, the people who did a lot of work for the synagogue got recognized as well. I, I'll open, Karen, I think we can open it now because if anybody wants to ask anything about this page or a search, I can do that from, from, from with, and, and continue. Um, I have one more page of those uh, and we see what we have, see what happens. Okay. What does Pat Patan mean? The person who wrote this said it was this and that. But I don't know what language it is. Does anybody know the language? No. This and that is what I understood. Okay. I'd selected some other pages here. Um, this, these are some bat for announcements. Um, Gila Nadler, Cassie Rogers, Rachel Applefield, and Sivan Barav, and the naming of Lauren Beth Turco, and Bar Mitzvah, Nadav Shalef, and Noah Wallowick, and Joshua Schulman. And Louis Weiner, I think he celebrated his, was it the 63rd or 83rd? Bar Mitzvah anniversary, and he received a fountain pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marie Silverman is recognized for volunteering at Menorah Manor. Marie, your name, your, your name appears in the bulletins extremely frequently. Your name uh, comes up regularly. And so I, I, I did a search on Marie, and then and I couldn't believe how many I found. And uh, then 
Marcia and Mike Shane joined CBS. That's a good one. And um, recognize Harry Lane for his his dedication to the um, ritual committee. And then the final thing I have is one of the best pictures preserved from uh, 1987, 1987, 88 board. Um, some, after a great picture, um, a lot of people did a lot for the congregation in that time. Some not with us now, with blessed memory. Others happily still here. That's an amazing photo. It is truly an amazing picture. It was, I found it in one of the brochures, but this one, Johanna happened to have a print that was just absolutely perfect condition. And uh, Karen, I'm open to questions, discussion, or we've had enough with <laughs> either one. Anybody who has a question, um, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask. It doesn't sound like we're tripping over each other to ask questions, so please feel free. David, this, this is Karen Evans. I was wondering about the, your backdrop um, it looks like a beautiful synagogue that you're standing in. That is the Esnoga in Amsterdam, built in 16875. Oh, beautiful. Never been changed. <laughs> it's the it's, it's so-called Portuguese synagogue in, in uh, Amsterdam. Uh -huh. Lovely. It's nice to see a photo of Ray Fileman. I don't think I had seen a photo of her. And she, we, and we just made a, a monument for her that she had passed away. And I guess they're not, none of the, I don't know. Anyway, we've finally got that together for her. This is Dorothy. I would also comment how wonderful it is to see father and son sitting on the board together, Melvin and Mark Silverman. Actually, looking at this, this picture, each of these people obviously have their own story and their own contributions to the congregation. And we could probably go through, you know, naming the people and, and creating memories um, which have not necessarily been recorded in words, but each of us who knew any of them uh, could make some wonderful contributions there. It's just a, a very memorable group of people. Notice they're all smiling, so it must have been a good board meeting before the picture was taken. Oh, there probably wasn't a board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just a picture. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> As I look at this and I see um, Louis Susskind. Yes. Uh, just in a most amazing story of how Louis, Louis escaped from, I think he was in Belgium. Yes. Uh, and how he escaped with diamonds and ended up in South Africa for many years, or in Africa for many years, and then Cuba and the US. And it, uh, I know it's an amazing story because um, he actually did, wrote it out and I know Bobby typed it up and printed it for the book for him. A truly amazing story. Beautiful picture. Beautiful memories of all of them. This is Joe Applefield. I just want to thank you for this stroll down memory lane because we've been members for 41 years and it's a part of us, like it's a part of so many of you. And I just think that this is great. So I wanna thank you for your time and effort. We really have an extraordinary history for such a small synagogue. We've just, we've done great things through the years. We really have. And I wanna compliment you. I remember when you and Bobby first came up with the coal 
that I thought that was just a wonderful representation of who we were. Well, uh, thank you, Joe. But uh, let me say the call is uh, Rabbi Bromberg's inspiration, and we just put it on paper for him. <laughs> I happen to be yeah. good at publishing, and that was, that was my strength. So there it is. <laughs> well, without you, we wouldn't have these records. So. Well, it's interesting. Technology allowed us to do that, and I've done. As I said, I make them available there. I, I know Marie Silverman has set aside a number of, 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 of articles for archives and um, that, that at some point could be worked into something for permanent and something that could be accessed. Um, I think there's a great opportunity for us to start sharing some of this archived information with our congregants today. I think some people will uh, recognize some of the names in the information. And for those that, that are new and don't, they'll just be, I think, happy to see so much history for this synagogue that they're now part of. Okay. I think Rabbi David wants to say a few words. What, what I wanted to say was really just uh, spoken by some of the others, just in appreciation for uh, David putting together this, uh, this uh, compilation so we can take a moment to contemplate. And um, Joe, uh, I remember when we first came to the synagogue, I think it was the first year, um, I, it was uh, around the time of the high holidays, and Paul was in the back putting up a sukkah with some tools. <laughs> and uh, that I, no one was helping him. <laughs> so we uh you know people like like you guys who really just stepped in and did what was necessary to make a shul run and uh, when you look at those the the coal and uh, all those things like you realize that you know when there's a need uh people just step in there and um do what has to be done and so i think it made the the groundwork for our congregation is probably the reason that we're still here you know, a lot of conservative synagogues have either um, folded or gone in, you know, with other ones, merged. And it's probably because uh, everyone has a sense uh, of responsibility to, our, uh, to each other, to, this, to the community that we've been able to keep going for so many years. And uh, so we, uh, it's good to, like Karen just said, it's good to acknowledge what came before because it makes you uh, uh, value and cherish what we have now. So to all of you who were there for that history, thank you for laying the foundation for us. And once again to David, thank you for putting that uh, effort in and giving us this opportunity to reflect. Happy to do it. What a wonderful way to begin Kharish Elo. Talk about reflection. Right. Yes. Yeah. Really feel it, or, you know, for some of us, really feel it. Others are viewing it like the whipped cream. But for many of us, it's, it's really Me. reviewing genera generation to generation. Right. So, um, very meaningful, very meaningful. We've come a long way. And we're in, everybody's in this together right now. We'll see what memories are created for this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Let's make sure they're documented. 
Well, are there any other comments that we can uh, uh, entertain here at the time or? If not, we can come to a close. The, the only thing I'll add is that <clears throat> David gave us permission to, to record this session. So we will have the recording available and we can uh, download it and share a link to anyone who wants to watch it again or to anyone that um, didn't get a chance to join us today and would like to watch it. And David, you're gonna make your slide presentation available to me as well. And I can share that? Sure. Okay. I just want to know, is there going to be a part two and a part three and a part four? <laughs> I know it was a lot of work, but this, this, was, um, this was amazing. It was fascinating information. And, you know, this is, as someone who has not been here a lot of years. This is just a small window. And, and, you know, I got thought about doing it only because i had been looking back and say, well, how did my ancestors ever end up in Jamaica? What was the story behind the backstory? And, you know, they're, they're from 16, middle of the 1600s. And, uh, and then they escaped Inquisition in Portugal. It's a, and, and you can find records on that. I'm still searching for some. Uh, a lot of them are still searching for, but it's a, extraordinary to read the, what you read in terms of records of, of people, how, how they lived, how the synagogues were operated, how they handled uh, the poverty, how they handled the dowries for, 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 for orphan girls, and it just, just goes on and on, just incredible story. And that inspires me to, to read more. So I spent hours reading um, and looking online at, and these are ancient documents, many of them handwritten, that are really hard to read. And then when you've read them, you have to translate them because they're in another language. So it's very interesting. So um, I leave you with that. But hey, David, you yes. would you, I don't know if you can, can you take us on a tour of the synagogue, which is your backdrop there? I don't um, there are several online on um, on YouTube, of course, but I um, I don't know if I can show that. But I, well, I can see. No, is there a way of your pointing? Your head is covering a good piece of it. Let me see. Um, um. Okay. We can see the beam right there. Okay. Can I share this? I can share uh, this picture. That's what, can you see that? Oh, yes. 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 <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Are those still candles that are being used? Absolutely. There's no electricity and no heating in the sanctuary. So in the winter time, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a small synagogue that's heated that they use in the winter time. Um, but this was built in 1675. The floor is wood. There's a little bit of sand on the floor. And you will hear people talk about sand on the floor of the synagogue in Jamaica and Curacao and Virgin Islands and so on. And it really all started because of Amsterdam. They were all made as a copy of this synagogue. Synagogue in Spanish town built in Jamaica, built in 1707, was an exact copy. It had the candle, candlesticks, the hanging candle lights, almost identical to these. I've got pictures of it. And the same in, in Bevis Marks in London and other places. It's really amazing. They just copied it. And the sand is, is an Amsterdam thing because there's a lot of damp, so they never bothered to. They just use the sand as a means of, of, of being able to keep the floor reasonably clean. They can sweep it and put some new fresh sand on. St. Thomas. Yeah, and... there's, no, there's no, you'll, you'll hear a lot of uh, stories about it. it came because of walking in the desert or from wanting to be quiet in the Inquisition or something. This is nothing to do with that. It's just Amsterdam. You'll find butcher shops with sand in Amsterdam. <laughs> so it's, it's a, just an Amsterdam thing. This is, I've, I've been to the synagogue twice and it, it truly is an amazing place. I, I'd like to spend another two weeks up there. The, the library at this community is just, just the biggest Jewish library in, I think, in anywhere. It's just, history on it. Thank okay. you. Oh.
Wow. Happily, I had in Leo. Uh, this is that was a big, big thing for me. <laughs> is that balcony the women's section? Yes. It is orthodox, and it still is. Now, the one in Curacao, which is similar to it, um, is does not have the separate seating. Have, correct? Have you been to that one, David? No, I haven't, but I'm pretty sure it did originally. Right. I, yeah. I was there, and it did not have it did not have separate seating. Although maybe it had many many years ago. Well, if I can just take a moment to remind everybody of the upcoming Taking Stock During Elul sessions. Next Wednesday, we have Going on a Whale Watch, a visual presentation on the Book of Jonah, facilitated by Naomi, who is on the third row for me in the boxes. Um, on the 26th in the evening, we have Letters to God, Memoir and Writing Reflections in Elul, facilitated by Martha Margolis. On the 31st in the evening, we have Melody and Meaning from the Mafsur, facilitated by Rabbi Danielle. September 1st, we have Practicing Holiness in Our Daily Lives. Um, I'll be facilitating that one, and that's in the morning. Uh, Johanna will be teaching us on September 2nd, Shofar Senses. On September 7th, we have Who Shall Live, Who Shall Die with uh, Rabbi David. September 8th, an Israel update from Dr. Eric Steckler. September 9th, Kanishas, Chestnuts, Morty, and Abe, Comforting Thoughts in a Pandemic Year. Uh, facilitated by Paul Applefield. And we'll conclude the Elul series on Saturday evening, September 12th, which is Slichot that night. So the program prior to the Slichot service uh, will be David Silvera facilitating it, and it will be Slichot in the Spanish Portuguese tradition. So, David, we thank you for kicking off and concluding our LL series. Um, that's really exciting for us. Um, just remember anything you would like to attend, register, we'll send out the links, and um, we'll all have some great opportunities to learn during this season. David, thank you so much. My pleasure. Everybody who joined in, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for doing what you're doing. My pleasure. David, thank you, David. Ashkar. Have a great day. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov.